untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another historic gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-black snow combo control deck titled Snow Slumber as voted on by my supporters on Patreon featuring a Merit Lacious Slumber from the latest anthology expansion, a two-mana legendary snow enchantment saying when it enters a battlefield or another snow permanent enters a battlefield under our control we get to scry one and at the beginning of our upkeep if we control 10 or more snow permanents we can sacrifice the enchantment to create a Merit Lage a legendary 2020 black avatar creature token with flying and indestructible. So this is going to be the primary win condition in the deck. Now there's a few ways we could build around this enchantment. I opted to go with a taking turns approach where we're playing with four copies of Karn's Temporal Sundering as well as four copies of Alrun's Epiphany to let us take a ton of extra turns which will give us more time to get those snow permanents in play with the slumber and it also makes good use of the scry one ability to help us find more extra turn effects and then of course we need some planeswalkers to enable Karn's Temporal Sundering, so we've got the full playset of Narset, two copies of Teferi and two copies of Jace Unraveler of Secrets, and then to top things off, two copies of Blood on the Snow as a nice snow sweeper that can potentially get a planeswalker back from our graveyard. So let's take a closer look at the entire deck here, starting out with four copies of Fatal Push as our cheap spot removal spell of choice. Now we could be playing Fabled Passage in the mana base to enable Revolt for Fatal Push, although it is nice to have a lot of untapped sources early on to cast a turn 3 Narset for instance and then in later turns we also don't necessarily want to shuffle our deck since we'll be scrying a bunch of cards to the bottom and seeing cards with Narset's ability that we don't necessarily want to shuffle back into our deck so there is definitely a downside to shuffling then at 2 mana besides our 2 copies of Merit Lage's Slumber we also have the full set of Cold Steel Heart another addition from the latest anthology expansion a 2 mana snow artifact that enters the battlefield tapped we have to name a color as it enters the battlefield and then it taps for 1 mana of the chosen color so this helps us ram towards our more expensive spells and also puts an extra snow permanent in play for our slumber. And then at 2 mana we can also foretell or Alrun's Epiphany for 2 mana, exiling it and then later casting it for 6 mana, creating two 1-1 one -one bird creature tokens with flying and taking an extra turn after this one, as well as exiling the Epiphany. Then at 3 mana we've got a full playset of Narset, Parter of Veils, which has a very powerful standic ability, saying each opponent cannot draw more than one card each turn, although we're mostly playing it for the minus 2 ability that lets us take a look at the top 4 cards of our library, and we can reveal a non-creature non-land card from among those and put it into our hand, so we can potentially activate that ability twice, and Narset will still stick around at 1 loyalty, which is very important to enable our Karn's Temporal Sundering, which we'll get to in a second. Then we also have two copies of a Replicating Ring, another snow permanent that taps for one man of any color. And at the beginning of our upkeep, we can put a Knight counter on the Replicating Ring. And then if there are eight or more counters on the Replicating Ring, we can remove all of them and create eight colorless snow artifact tokens named Replicated Ring that can also tap for one man of any color. So those will put a ton of snow permanents in play to help us transform a Merit Lage Slumber. And because we're taking so many extra turns, it's going to be easier to get those eight counters on Replicating ring before the game is over and same goes for the two copies of midnight clock a three mana artifact that taps for blue mana so sadly cannot cast a fatal push after playing a midnight clock unlike replicating ring which is a nice sequence the deck is capable of but for two and a blue we can put an hour counter on midnight clock and at the beginning of each player's upkeep so unlike replicating ring this also looks at the opponent's upkeep we can put an hour counter on midnight clock and when the 12th hour counter is put on midnight clock we shuffle our hand and graveyard into our library and then draw seven fresh cards and exile midnight clock so this can help us find more time walk effects we won't be able to shuffle those that we've already cast back into our deck since those always get exiled but it is a nice way to refuel our hand and hopefully draw into more time walks then at 4 mana we've got two copies of Teferi Master of Time, which can also potentially let us take extra turns with the minus 10 ultimate ability, which also synergizes with additional time walk effects, since it will be easier to reach 10 loyalty in the first place. And we may activate loyalty abilities of Teferi Master of Time on any player's turn, any time we could cast an instant. So we can use the plus 1 ability to draw a card and then discard a card in our turn, which can also help us find more interaction or more time walk effects, but we can use that plus 1 ability again in the opponent's turn, so we can essentially gain two loyalty per turn cycle or we can use the minus three saying target creature we don't control phases out so we can wait to see how the opponent attacks and then maybe use the minus three strategically to help us maybe save our planeswalker or protect our life total 
And then we also have the full playset of Ritual of Soot as our sweeper of choice, destroying all creatures with converted mana cost 3 or less. And it's always a close call which sweeper we end up playing in these blank control decks, as we essentially have three options between Ritual of Soot, Languish and Extinction Event. Extinction Event can be a little bit easier on the mana, only requiring single black, although with the mana fixing from Cold Steel Heart and Replicating Ring, it shouldn't be too much of a problem to cast a double black sweeper. And Extinction Event, of course, also has advantages against certain creatures that have death triggers, like maybe a Midnight Reaper, that you maybe want to avoid triggering. Then the Ritual of Soot right now I'm liking because it lines up nicely against Collected Company decks. Even the Gruel Aggro deck is playing Collected Company now, so we don't have to worry about a Questing Beast surviving Ritual of Soot. And then Ritual Soot can also deal with Death Shadow and Scourge of the Skyclaves, which can sometimes survive the minus four, minus four from Languish. Although Languish can also have its advantages against Mono Red Goblins, it deals with Krenko and Muxus, whereas Ritual of Soot cannot. And Languish can also get around the Indestructible granted by Linvala if you're up against a Bant Angels deck. So it's always a bit of a guessing game which decks you're going to be facing. So it's always mana game dependent which sweeper you want to be playing. Then we also have two copies of a Jace Unraveler of Secrets. The the 5 mana Planeswalker starts out at 5 loyalty, and the plus 1 lets us scry 1 and then draw a card, so this is great for helping us find more time walk effects. Then the minus 2 gives us a bit of creature interaction, returning target creature to its owner's hand, and then we can potentially still untap with Jace and start plussing. And then the minus 8 ultimate can also be pretty painful for the opponent, giving us an emblem saying whenever an opponent casts their first spell each turn, counter that spell. And then topping off our curve, four copies of Karn's Temporal Sundering to complement our four copies of Elrond's Epiphany. Now this is a legendary sorcery, so we can only cast it if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, which is why we have all these planeswalkers in the deck. And then target player takes an extra turn after this one, and return up to one target a non-land permanent to its owner's hand, and then we exile Temporal Sundering. So we can use that bounce effect to bounce an opposing permanent, but we can also potentially use it to reset a Narset part of Veils that's stuck on one loyalty, so we can then replay Narset and start using the minus two once again, which is an interaction that comes up quite often. And then we also have two copies of Blood on the Snow, which is a snow sorcery destroying all creatures or all planeswalkers. And then we return a creature or planeswalker card with converted mana cost X or less from our graveyard to the battlefield, where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it. And then our entire mana base is built out of snow lands with 10 snow covered islands, 10 snow covered swamps, and four copies of Ice Tunnel for additional mana fixing. Now we could also be playing with Kahira the Orphan Guard as our companion since we don't have any creatures in the deck, although it's only going to be relevant if we have the Fairy Master of Time in play to help us discard it, or if we happen to have Cold Steel Hearts and Replicating Ring provide additional mana fixing, which is not going to be very likely. So overall I don't think it's worth it to include Kahira as companion, since it also gives the opponent a lot of valuable information during mulligan decisions, since typically Kahira decks point towards creatureless control decks, so the opponent knows not to overvalue spot removal, so that's our deck. Now let's jump into the games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. Got a bit of ramp into a Teferi. Still need to find some creature interaction if our opponent's playing a more aggressive deck. Temporal Sundering's gonna be nice if we can untap with Teferi. Since we'll have the mana to cast it the turn after we play Teferi if we curve heart into Midnight Clock. Alright, opponent's on an energy deck, probably Aetherworks Marvel. So... Yeah, they could potentially cast an Ulamog on turn 4. Here probably doesn't matter too much what we name since we've got a ton of fixing already. So I could decide to play Teferi right now, although I kind of like going Midnight Clock into another Cold Steel Heart instead. That way we can potentially cast our Temporal Sundering a turn sooner. So our opponent has 6 energy, let's see if they have an Aetherworks Marvel. They do, so they get 1 activation here. And do they hit an Ulamog? Doesn't look like it. It's gonna be a Rogue Refiner. That's fine. Alright, Alrun's Epiphany. So I've got 6 mana, but I cannot cast my Temporal Sundering yet. So I can go Midnight Clock into Teferi, or I can play Jace, and then plus maybe hit a land drop to Fortel Epiphany. I think I like that the most. We can figure 
Moving fast. The land is fine. And then hope that our opponent doesn't get to 6 energy to activate Marvel once again. It's gonna be Puzzle Knots. They need one more energy, but they have a third land to sacrifice Puzzle Knot here. Alright, so they get to spin again. And this time they did hit the Eldrazi, which is gonna exile Jace and presumably Midnight Clock. goes after our land instead. Narset to draw, so yeah, we're in kind of a rough spot since we cannot easily cast our Temporal Sundering while keeping our Planeswalker alive. So maybe what I can try is to play Teferi plus in the hopes of finding a land, so I can also play Narset. And then Teferi can minus on Ulamog. They can kill one of my two Planeswalkers, but then I get to untap with Temporal Sundering. Let's give that a try. And then I want to leave double blue untapped if possible here. Which I guess is not going to happen, so I need to draw a blue source specifically. Alright, so we're kind of doing it. So I get to play Narsets. Finds Temporal Sundering. And then in the opponent's turn we can minus Teferi on Ulamog before it gets a chance to attack. Otherwise they would exile 20 cards here. So they get to finish off one of my two Planeswalkers. And then hopefully we get to take a bunch of extra turns. This was overwhelming. opponent gonna harness lightning their own rogue refiner so they can activate Aetherworks Marvel once again. Which finds another rogue refiner, that's okay. And another puzzle knot, so we should be able to untap here with Teferi. As well as our Midnight Clock. Ritual of Soot can clean up rogue refiners, but that's not what we really care about, so start by plussing. And then I think we get rid of Ritual of Suits. Since I might need Cold Steel Heart for additional mana. Cast our Temporal Sundering for now. Could also play Epiphany if we want to start attacking with 1 1 tokens, but I don't think that's going to get the job done here. So I'll play Sundering first in case we end up getting to 12 counters on the Midnight Clock, so I don't mind losing my hands to the Midnight Clock essentially. And then we will take an extra turn, and we will bounce. I guess we cannot target Ulamog. Can target Marvel. That seems fine. Get to untap. And then now I can play Cold Steel Heart and Temporal Sundering, but let's plus first in case we hit another Time Walk. Narset's pretty good too. Although, let's see. Don't have enough mana to Narset and Temporal Sundering, so I think I still get rid of Narset. This one names Blue. And then we'll take an extra turn and bounce, I guess, the Puzzle Knots, although it's cheaper for them to replay than Sacrifice. Maybe a Rogue Refiner then. Don't really want to bounce any of my own permanents. Alright, so now we can plus. Another Teferi. Let's see. So now I have the mana to activate my Midnight Clock once and cast Epiphany. And then I might prefer the extra land in play. Put a counter on the clock. So I can plus another Epiphany works. Five. 
put a counter on the clock. And next turn it will draw seven fresh cards. And there's a slumber at long last, although no time walk effect, sadly. I probably should have played Slumber first just to give me a chance to scry into another time walk. Yeah, that was a mistake. So we'll get rid of Ice Tunnel here. Although it doesn't look like we would have found one. Blood on the Snow, I guess I could keep. Although... Yeah, it's not necessarily great against Ulamog. Play another ring. Don't need Ritual of Sit. And then I guess we'll chip in for a little bit of damage since one hit from Slumber is not going to be enough to close out the game. Alright, we'll pass. And then I'll have to minus three on Ulamog once again, most likely. But we should have enough Snow Permanence to transform Slumber at least. It seems fine. They could have played Marvel first to get one additional energy from the refiner dying. Alright, let's see if they hit another Ulamog here. To exile my slumber. Doesn't look like it. Gonna be a Chandra Awakened Inferno instead. I'm an explosively good pyromancer. And that's probably just gonna finish off the fairy here. My past is catching up to me. Slumber transforms. A ritual of Sit the Draw, not what we needed. So now what? I guess I attack my opponents with my one ones. Going after Chandra doesn't seem like that's going to do much. Yeah, if we hit uh, an extra time walk with our draw 7, we probably would have been fine, but sadly wasn't to be. So I can block Ulamog, 20 cards are gone. Let's see how many time walks. Not too many, so there's still quite a few in the deck. Although another Ulamog can exile my indestructible token. And our opponent's bound to find another one soon here. Finds a Glimmer of Genius instead. Now Whirler Virtuoso can also make a 1-1 chum blocking token to potentially block my 2020, so a single time walk is not necessarily going to be enough now. Although we could Ritual of Soot first, I suppose, so never mind. Time Walk should still do it, since we get to hit him for 20 and then 20 again. Puzzle Mods up to 5. Alright, there's Temporal Sundering, and if you look at Marilege, it is a legendary creature, so we can actually cast it here. That's awesome, so Ritual of Soot. Get rid of the Whirler Virtuoso. Attack for 20. And then Temporal Sundering. We take an extra turn, we'll bounce Chandra. And our opponent explodes. Wow, what an epic game. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and yeah, we'll try this. Turn to Cold Steel Hearts. Can name Black, so we can potentially cast a Ritual of Suit we find off Narset. Take it from there. 
Turn one mountain. Still gonna play Cold Steel Heart over Epiphany here. And then we just wanna keep hitting our land drops. Uh, turn two, Steamkin. So if Narset can find a Fatal Push, that would be nice. Finds a Ritual of Soot instead. Probably still the pick. Although our opponent knows about it now. So turn three. I expect Narsa to die and then our opponent to sandbank their creatures and then we may or may not Ritual of Soot. Alright, Narsa at two. And we found a Fatal Push, even better, so get to use Narset, maybe find one of our ramp artifacts, like Midnight Clock. And then play that, plus Fortale Epiphany, or I could keep a Fatal Push. I guess we can do both, even. Alright, and then... I'll let the opponent untap with Steamkin and then maybe cast it in response to the first red spell they play to avoid them uh, making any extra mana in case they have a bunch of instants. Or we can wait and see if they keep playing around Ritual of Soot. Now I'll Fatal Push. And then if we can... Untap with Narset, we get to cast Temporal Sundering, so that would be neat. And we even have the mana to Narset plus Ritual now. Thrill, this might be a Phoenix deck, as we see Arclight Phoenix hit the graveyard. And a Fury to get Phoenix back. Alright. Might have to Epiphany first, just to protect our Planeswalkers, although Blood on the Snow is also a good one. So now I don't mind losing Narset as much. And pick up probably Teferi, even though we cannot cast him right now. And then we can put an extra counter on Midnight Clock. Opponent will have to spend some resources dealing with Narsets. And then we'll maybe play Teferi. We'll see. I was not prepared for this. Opponent's definitely sandbagging some stuff. They might have a couple burn spells at the ready as well. Jace. Also not a bad pickup. Would like to hit my land drop. I think Jace and then plus is probably the best course of action. And then Blood on the Snow can get Jace back. Because the fairy minusing on a creature can be awkward if we don't want to cast her sweeper to turn after. Because the creature would survive. And Slumber is good, but I would rather find a land. Alright, that's good. And then we really just need to be able to untap with one of our Planeswalkers at some points to cast our Sundering, get the party started. Although we might have to Epiphany first to get those chum blocking tokens. So Phoenix hits Jace, ah, well played. and we might see a burn spell finish him off. It's gonna be Shock, plus Pillar of Flame, that's fine. Your victory. Doesn't get exiled, it only counts for creatures. So I have 8 mana, also have to keep the counters on Midnight Clock in mind, which at some point is gonna get rid of my hand. So, yeah, could go for Epiphany here. And then, let's see, next turn, 6, 7, 8. I might go up to 9 mana. Still not enough to go to Fairy Plus Sundering, which is what we really want to set up. So I could just Blood on the Snow, get back Jace Plus again. Seems fine. I 
Although Narset can also have its advantages in this matchup, where the opponent's got a few cantrips. And then I'll take the land. Alright. So we're pretty close to being able to play Teferi and Temporal Sundering in the same turn. Which is what we're trying to set up. Finally gets back to burn spells, which will get back Arclight Phoenix as well. So Jay's down. Yeah, this is definitely showing why Ritual of Soot can be worse than, let's say, Extinction Event would be here. Midnight Clock goes up to 9 counters, so we're getting pretty close to 12. But that's going to line up nicely with our turn where we get to Temporal Sundering, and in fact, now with Narset, it could already Temporal Sundering now, which is probably going to be the play. And then I think we want to Temporal Sundering now before activating Narset so they don't get a chance to kill her. Alternatively, I could minus and then use Temporal Sundering to bounce Narset. Nah, I think this is fine. We'll take an extra turn, bounce Phoenix, and then minus Narset. And see what we get. An extra time walk or a blood on the snow. Blood on the snow gets my Jace back. Temporal Sundering is Temporal Sundering. And then we can maybe use a Sundering Narset trick where we bounce her on Narset. So yeah, if we can draw land next turn, I get to play Teferi, play Sundering. Bounce my own Narsets. Midnight Clock goes up to 10, so we're getting close to a fresh hand, and we still have an Epiphany waiting in exile. So we're getting to the point where we want to find that Merit Lasia Slumber, although we did scry one to the bottom earlier. Alright, so we'll start by playing Teferi to try and hit our land drop. Probably don't need Ritual of Soot anymore. No land, but a replicating ring. Minus Narsets, find Fatal Push. So if they finish off one of my Planeswalkers, Fatal Push will be able to deal with Phoenix as well. Alright. We'll pass the turn. Midnight Clock will go up to 11 and then 12 in my turn, so we will lose both copies of Temporal Sundering, sadly. Narset prevents Thrill from drawing more than one card. But at the very least, Sundering will get shuffled back. We will also shuffle that Slumber back into our library. So it's not all bad. I have reached my limit. And now Fatal Push can deal with Arclight Phoenix if it returns from the graveyard. It's finale for Crash Through and Shock. Still not enough to kill Teferi, as we get to plus in response. Time to improvise. And doesn't matter too much what we get rid of, since Midnight Clock will shuffle everything back. Arclight Phoenix returns. And we'll push. Alright, so Midnight Clock happens. Get a fresh draw, including a Temporal Sundering. Make that two. Alright. So we'll get the party started with Elrond's Epiphany here, I think. I do love a good and that should be able to close out the game between all these extra Time Walk effects. I can play Ring into another Epiphany being foretold. Teferi helps us find more action, would love to find 
Marital Asia Slumber now. Chase is also great. Fast. So we'll definitely cast Epiphany and then Jace as well. Try to find more time walks. Try to find slumber. I'm always as I think I know what to do. Narset seems good. And in the meantime, we might get some extra mana from replicating ring as well. Think fast. Plus the ferry. And find blood on the snow or to ferry. We'll go with. Probably Blood on the Snow, which can get back a Planeswalker from the Graveyard. Sundering, I guess, targets us, and I'll bounce my own Narset. Which we can then replay. Activate again. Past, and Find Epiphany. By of time. Hit for four. Still have a land to play. And we should be able to pretty much combo off here. Really want to find slumber before the game is over. We can also ultimate or Jason unravel our secrets. Another Narset. And our opponent explodes. Sadly, didn't get to combo off completely here. But yeah, we definitely had this one covered. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Got our slumber, bit of ramp, some planeswalkers. Everything we need here. Opponent also with a snow covered island and ruin cramps that are probably playing the other cramp added in the latest anthology. So, is crying with slumber is not going to help me much in this matchup. Although, Narset should be pretty good, preventing any card draw from Tutelich and into the story. Opponent milled a Jason Raveler Secrets. So if we suspect a counter spell, I probably don't want to run out Narset yet. We could go Midnight Clock into a 2-drop. Uh, there's a 2-Lich, so definitely going to play Narset now. And then we want to keep Black Mana untapped in case we draw Fatal Push for Ruin Crab. Now it doesn't matter too much. Ritual of Soot could also work. Is that better than Sundering here? I think I'll still take the Sundering. So they wouldn't be able to trigger Tutelage in their turn anymore. Besides their one draw step. And there's a second one. They still have to discard a card to Tutelage, even though they don't get to draw. Gets rid of a Dismissal, which is a pretty good answer to Maridlage. So let's see what we hit with Narsets. Can take a Ritual if we want. I mean, Midnight Clock is pretty good against the Mill deck too, if we get to shuffle our Graveyard back into our library, to be honest. So I kind of like taking another Midnight Clock. And then 
Probably just gonna go midnight clock times two. Get those hour counters ticking. So they do get to mill me for four here. Although next turn we could Temporal Sundering. Mirror Maid to copy Tutelage. Although it seems to be looking at Midnight Clock as well. Yeah, actually copied our Midnight Clock. That's fine. So they really needed extra mana. Alright, so I have a total of 7 mana. Probably fine to Sundering, or we could get Teferi in play first and then wait an extra turn to get more value from our Planeswalker. And then for now maybe go Slumber, set up our Scry to draw with Teferi. Before playing Ice Tunnel. And then the Instant Speed card draw is also another way to get around the mill effects from our opponent. Since we could potentially keep a card on top, draw with Teferi, play a Scry land, keep a card on top and activate again in the opponent's turn. Back up Narset seems fine. And then I can probably get rid of the second Slumber. Could also minus on Ruin Crab in the opponent's upkeep. And Epiphany seems good, so happy to draw that before we get milled. And get rid of a Cold Steel Heart. Think fast. So two large triggers. At least uh, copies of our time walk effect that get milled will get shuffled back with our midnight clock instead of getting exiled. It's gonna be a spark double. Not sure what that tried to do here. But uh, I guess our opponent messed up and explodes. Well. We kind of had them covered with Midnight Clock, which is great against any mill deck, and then we were about to take a few extra turns, so we were pretty likely to win. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine opening hand. Facing turn one Mountain into Soulscar Mage. So we're hurt a little bit by our lands coming to play tapped. And not getting to Fatal Push. But then next turn I can play another Tunnel plus Fatal Push. Take it from there. Put on the Red Whites and a Steamkin is going to be the target of removal. Could have potentially waited just to give the opponent less information. Although you never know, White could have some indestructible tricks. Right, opponent finds another creature. And a Skewer the Critics goes face. So next turn we can clean up the board with Ritual of Suits. I think we just want to get a Midnight Clock going. Pyromancer puts us to 13. So definitely gonna need this Ritual of Suits. Also can't forget about Ramonap Ruins, which represents two more damage. Well, let's see if we can stabilize. Beaumont Courier 
Also represents more card draw. Temporal Sundering I cannot quite cast. So probably go for Narset, see if we can pick up Fatal Push. And then go Ring plus Fatal Push. It's gonna be Slumber and Ring instead. Guess we'll take Slumber. Although this turn probably better off playing Ring. So good chance that we're dead if they find a burn spell here. Ah, just a land. So we're essentially at one. If we count Ramon up ruins, but I'm gonna sacrifice Courier in the hopes of closing out the game right now. And Wizard's Lining will do exactly that. So yeah, the Mono Rats, Aggro matchup, not great. Definitely needs early interaction and can't afford to have too many tap lands. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Got some interaction, some ramp. Just missing a planeswalker pretty much. Opponent on Rakdos. And a Priest of Forgotten Gods. Don't really need to kill that right now. Can't wait and see what else they do. Voice Strider. That's fine. So I could Ritual of Soot here. Especially now that they attacked and can't activate the priests. And then I still get to foretell. And again, sacrifice to the Ghost Rider to scry. That's okay. So we'd love to find one of our eight planeswalkers to combine with our temporal sundering. Weaponize the monsters into Croxa. Might be ambitious to keep my Sundering in hand. Although, Fatal Push is probably not going to be great considering they didn't play a different 2 drop. Right, picked up another Fatal Push. I guess we'll time walk here. Alright, Jace is excellent. And do I want to land? Don't really need one. And then do we play around any haste creatures? Maybe like the uh, two mana 1-1 one, one with haste. Keep a token back. It's going to be another priest, which we can fatal push. And blood artists are responsible to push the priest. Alrighty, so start by drawing. Blood on the snow is appealing, although it doesn't seem necessary right now. The fairy's good. So I could wait on temporal sundering since the opponent's board state isn't too threatening. And our opponent concedes to the double planeswalker, and then we were pretty likely to untap with both, cast our sundering, get even more extra turns, a ton of extra card draw, and probably chain together a few of them to eventually find slumber and win the game. On to the next one. 
All right, we're on the play with a reasonable hand facing Lurus of the Dream Den. So it could be a Death Shadow deck or a Spirit Dancer deck. So turn two, gonna lead with Heart to maybe help us ramp into our Planeswalkers. This can name blue. And then next turn, might get to Fortel Epiphany if we don't have anything else going on. Turn one mountain. Unusual for a Death Shadow deck, so it might be Black Red Arcanist without Death Shadow. So they might thought seize away my Jace, sadly, but at least our Epiphany will be safe. And then I guess we'll name black on this one. So if we can untap with Jace, that would be awesome, but Thoughtseize might uh, prevent that from happening. Archfiend's Vessel's fine. Get sacrificed to Phyrexian Tower for two mana. And a Thoughtseize, all right. At least flashback Thoughtseize doesn't do much. Claim Vessel makes it a 5-5. Five five. And we picked up Slumber. And another Epiphany seems fine. Keep that on top so we can chain together a double Epiphany, which buys us more time for Slumber to eventually get 10 permanents. Already at 7 here. Narset seems fine. And then might as well cast a more expensive one first. Hit for two. Alright, and then probably want to scry after we play Narset. And minus. Ritual of Soot or Teferi, we'll take Teferi. Cold Steel Heart is also an extra snow permanence, but I imagine the versatility of Teferi is going to be more useful. And then we get to Scry, and then a land. I could keep on top since it's the 10th permanent for Slumber, but I'm probably going to have to discard it to Teferi here anyway. If I don't have a plan... I'll just make one up. Don't worry, I'll think of something. And we'll keep the tokens back since we're not gonna win with 1-1 one -one tokens here. Spark Harvest onto Ferry. So is there any upside to activating him? I guess we minus on the Arcanist so they can't kill Narset as well. And then I get to chump. They're just going face. Eh, still probably worth chumping here. Or I can take five. Doesn't matter too much. All right, so that's my final permanence I need. And then we just want some time walks. Perfect. Now I get to attack. Get a 2020. Time walk would have been the cherry on top here. So now we gotta watch out for a claim the firstborn. Stealing my token. So we'll just send four birds. And then keep land in hand, it's probably fine. All right, let's see if they have an Act of Treason effect for my 2020. Village rides to sacrifice Arcanist and go digging, but Narset says no. And yeah, 
GG's. Married Lege is gonna close out the game after a couple attacks. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Missing double black for Ritual of Soot, but I've got quite a bit of card draw here to help us find more black mana. Facing Speaker of the Heavens, so this is the Angel Life Gain deck, which is also a matchup where Ritual of Soot should be quite good, unless they're on the banned version with Linvala that can make their creatures indestructible. So for now, I like Narsets, so we get to activate her twice. And then I could take another Ritual of Soot, although then they'll know about it. Still probably worthwhile. Collected Company, of course, is going to make it a bit more difficult to fully leverage Ritual of Soot, since they'll get to make some creatures end of turn. You cannot see your folly. And Resplendent Angel. Fine target for Ritual of Soot. And then I could wait a turn on activating Narsets to maybe make it easier to set up my Temporal Sundering. Don't think they have any haste creatures or other ways to interact with Narsets. A Righteous Valkyrie is fine. So now we can Teferi, plus maybe minus in the opponent's turn, and then set up Temporal Sundering. And then might as well minus Narsets. If we find Fatal Push, we can also kill Valkyrie here. Epiphany is also a good one. Yeah, good window for Teferi. If nothing else, I'm Chase is also excellent. Guess Midnight Clock can go. So we'll wait to see if we need to... Minus the fairy. For now, it doesn't look like it. Just take the two. It also makes my ritual of sit more effective if they play a couple more creatures here. Speaker. And angel. All right. So another ritual of suits is going to be happening. My hand is so stacked. Um, I guess we get rid of one epiphany. And then we can ritual keep a push or maybe foretell epiphany. And then we just want to resolve Jace in between Fatal Push and the uh, Minus ability on Jace and Teferi. We should be able to untap with our Planeswalker. So worst case scenario, they have a Collected Company in hand as their last card. Blood on the Snow also excellent. Don't think I need Fatal Push. So we'll play Jace. Uh, maybe plus here first. Now we'll play Jason plus first. Don't need that one. So we let them untap with their Bishop of Wings. But next turn we can start time walking with two active planeswalkers. And our opponent sees a writing on the wall and concedes. So yeah, this was a nice showing of Ritual of Soot against the Angels deck, which is quite popular right now. So yeah, overall, Taking Turns definitely has a small niche in the historic metagame. It's going to struggle against the hyper-aggressive linear decks that can kill around turn 4 consistently, since we don't have a whole lot of cheap interaction, although that could potentially be addressed after sideboard. And then, of course, against any deck trying to get to the mid or late game, we can completely take over with our Planeswalkers and extra turns. And then Ritual of Soot, also a nice card right now against the various Collected Company decks. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.
I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.